All right, so beautiful day here in San Francisco. I'm gonna to try to make something of the scene behind me. Today I'm working on a 24 by 30 inch stretched linen canvas. I think I'm gonna compose the painting something like this. I do wanna include the cypress to the right. Sketching in burnt sienna, trying to get the big shapes in place. Uh, the most important thing is gonna be the placement of the bridge. And I wanna make sure that the size of the bridge is not too big. I want it to be sitting within the landscape and not just a close-up of the bridge. And it's kind of nice to have the cypress in the foreground and then the bridge in the distance. And then here, these are the Marin headlands back here. So I'm just starting out with some basic shapes and then I will refine these shapes if I like the placement. This bit of land comes out like this. And then in the distance, there's another shoreline over here. And then these uh, hills here, I think this is Tiburon out here. These are gonna be lighter in value and also bluer in color. I'm gonna kind of push those back into the distance. The challenge with this painting is gonna be primarily with the drawing. I wanna make sure that the tree is drawn correctly and that it looks like a cypress tree and then obviously i want to make sure that the bridge is drawn accurately but i still want to keep it feeling loose as well so it's kind of a challenge for sure big challenge and i have painted the bridge before but it's been a while and i, I haven't done this view actually i've painted it from uh, closer, closer to the bridge. And I'm just looking for a silhouette here that, that looks right. The roadway kind of arches this way and then it sweeps up in this direction. There's a cast shadow from the bridge over here that I like. So I want to make sure that I capture that shape before it disappears. It's like that. There's a shadow there. The base of the bridge is about here. Like this. Actually, I think it's lower. The base of the bridge is actually down here. I want to make sure that I have enough room Unless this comes higher. Actually, no, maybe maybe this is higher, actually. Something like that. There we go. Starting with a dark mixture here of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. I've thinned with liquid. I want to establish this tree shape uh, just because this is a really important part of the composition. And the light is changing out here as usual. Typical plein air scenario. I don't think I'm gonna stay exactly true to what I'm seeing, but close. Whenever I'm painting trees, I wanna make sure to leave some sky holes in the branches. So I take my dark mixture and I establish the trunks first and then I start squinting at the tree, just looking for the big shapes of the foliage that cover the trunks. And then I'm just looking for an appealing pattern. All right, the bridge comes down lower and the shadow is a little bit bigger than I had it. So I'm gonna lower the water line here. And I like that shadow shape. I think that'll work. I had the North Tower here painted a little bit too small, so I made it larger. And I'm using the other tower to um, determine where these crossbars are. So there's another one below this right here. I'm also looking at shapes. So I've noticed that the top opening is more of a square and it gets more rectangular as it goes down lower. All right, the land in the foreground slopes down and there's a dark bit of cliffs here. So I want to 
include that. And then also out in the water, I think I'm going to add a few rocks and then possibly some white water. And I'm not sure if that becomes distracting, then I'll just eliminate it. But I feel like it could be interesting to have a little bit of shoreline down here. While I'm blocking in these dark shapes, I'm not even paying attention to what I'm actually painting. I mean, I know these are parts of the bridge, obviously, but I'm not concerned with that. I'm trying to just think of shapes. This portion here is kind of a gray-blue color, and there's a gray-blue patch right there. Comes up like that, and little bits of it here as well. All right, so I did use a straight edge for the bridge here just to get the shadows in place. I'm going to try to have a balance of looseness and accuracy in drawing, which is always a challenge. It's one of the biggest challenges about painting, you know, houses, structures, cars, or whatever, is just getting that balance right between having the drawing accurate, but not feeling stifled or too careful. So once I get these shadows in place, uh, then I can be loose with the rest of the paint application and hopefully that will uh, create some spontaneity in the painting. I'm using a number six natural bristle flat right now. This is the smallest brush I have. So this will sort of keep me out of trouble, hopefully, uh, just because I cannot get overly detailed with it. I'm gonna have to keep things a bit loose and suggestive. And for this distant land, I'm gonna go with a light gray to start with. Actually, I can tell that that value may be too dark. That's all right, I can lighten that up, no problem. Painting subjects like this used to really intimidate me and frustrate me, but lately I've tried to just embrace the process, be patient, take my time, carefully observe, and try not to get overwhelmed by the big picture. Just keep on uh, working away at the shapes and stepping back frequently to make sure that everything is reading properly. So I'm adding a cast shadow from the bridge here. This was not visible when I first started painting, but I actually like it. Uh, before, there was just sort of a dark pattern. Uh, it was kind of the reflection of the bridge, but this shadow, I think, adds a bit of interest, so I'm going to include it. Unfortunately, fog is rolling in. I can feel it. <laughs> There's a cold breeze starting. It's been really warm out here, so I need to scrub in these colors and then also pay attention to the colors because I'm going to lose everything probably in about 15 minutes. So it's one of the struggles of painting out in this area. The Bay Area is a nice place to paint, but in the springtime it can be really challenging because of the fog and the wind and everything can change so quickly. Water out here. And the sky goes from a light blue to a darker blue. That I'm not so worried about. There's a pale green right in here. So I've got to get the color of the sky and then also the greens down here. Starts out with an ultramarine up top. And I'm using the sky to kind of carve out the shape of the bridge. There's a couple ways to approach drawing. When you have a big brush and you want to do detail, you can kind of paint it big and messy and then use the negative space around it or the negative shapes to kind of carve out the positive shapes. And that's what I'm trying to do here now. I've got a number eight 
natural bristle flat. Down low, I'm seeing sort of a purplish color to the sky. And so I'm gonna go with that. The fog is getting closer, but I'm still okay here. As long as I get these approximate colors in, I can do the rest from memory. Uh, obviously the shapes are not gonna change, but some of the subtle colors, I'm gonna lose those. And the scene is so complicated that it's gonna be really difficult to remember all of the, all of the colors. So I'm, I'm uh, kind of in a panic here, to be honest, or working really quickly. I know I've mentioned this before, but the paintings you see uh, in these videos, they are all completed on site. Sometimes I'll do touch-ups later for a show, but I never come back to a scene and work on a canvas a second time. These colors are sort of brownish, and then maybe a few other dark spots there that then the lighter portions are just a mixture of warm and cool greens and the more spontaneous I am with those colors the better I don't want to I don't want too much detail in this area because I want the eye to pass over to the bridge and to the distant headlands Okay, so there is the scrub in. That is basically the painting right there. All right, so at this point, I've turned the canvas uh, away from the sun. I had had it in the direct sun, but to get the accurate colors and values uh, for you know the final painting, I need to get it out of the direct light. It's really hard to judge colors and values accurately when the canvas or panel is in the direct light. I'm leaving a little bit of the purple from the scrub in, uh, but for the most part I'm painting over it. I'm also going to leave some of the uh, burnt sienna from the sketch. I'm still trying to pay attention to the overall shape here. I don't want to break up this shape. All right, well here's what I finished up with. This painting took about three and a half hours to complete, so a bit longer than usual. Usually it takes about two and a half hours to complete a painting, uh, even this size, 24 by 30, but the drawing was more technical than um, other compositions that I've done. And that is typical when I'm doing structures or buildings, that sort of thing. Um, so it did take a bit longer. I was definitely tired at the end. I never quite lost the light though, which is good. Uh, the fog came in, but it wasn't very heavy. So it did change the colors to a more subdued feeling of light, but I stuck with the bright, warm light that I had when I first showed up at the scene. And so overall, I'm happy with the way this came out. It was definitely a challenge. I felt like I was walking, kind of walking a tightrope. Just, I didn't want to lose the good effects that I had. I didn't want to lose the drawing. And yet I wanted to get the accurate color. I wanted to complete it on site. As I mentioned, I did not want to leave it unfinished. So it was, uh, it was definitely a challenge, but I like being pushed. I like being pushed to the limits of what I'm capable of. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It's the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated. So check it out. Other than that, stay creative. I'll see you guys in the next video.